This is a Super Aguri. In 2007, it was in its second year of competition. It was essentially a Honda B team. However, even the Honda A team wasn't doing too well. This year, the team had an average qualifying of 17th, but today, Takuma Sato would start 11th. Once underway, he would not only hold his position, but gain a few places. After the first safety car, he would put some good passes on faster cars, like Kimi. Takuma Sato is having a fantastic afternoon for Super Aguri. He's up in fifth place, and uh, at the moment, he's lapping faster still than the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. That is absolutely staggering. I'll say it again. Takuma Sato is in front of and lapping faster than Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari. He'd climb as high as fifth before a pit stop fumble would lose him more spots. Takuma Sato, his teammate, was running as high as fifth in front of the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen at one point, but he had a, a mix-up in the last safety car with the pit stops, and it's dropped him right down into 11th place. So chances of points today for Takuma Sato have gone away with that incident. What a shame for him, because he was going so well. He'd start 10 to go outside of the points, but would go on to battle and pass Ralf Schumacher. Then he'd charge down defending champion Fernando Alonso, and with two laps left, would dive by on the outside, past the wall of champions. This year, Sato was 30 years of age, and in his sixth year of F1, but only had a decade of racing experience. He started when he was 19, and quick maths, that means he made it to Formula One in just over five years. Sato would have been even higher up than this if he hadn't had the mix-up in his pit stop in his final safety car situation. He might even have finished fourth here. But before our protagonist had his first race at 19, other things happened. Like being born on the 28th of January, 1977 in Shinjuku, Tokyo, Japan. And in case you aren't very familiar with Tokyo, it's the world's most populated urban city. Some areas look like this, this, some this, or sometimes this. Pick your favorite. But of course, Sato was born in the late 70s and it looked more like this. He lived as an only child to his father Kazutoshi and his mother Akiko. Kazutoshi was a lawyer, and in Japan that's a relatively uncommon career. His mother Akiko was a stage actress, and in most parts of the world that's a relatively uncommon career. As such, both of his parents were familiar with taking the road less traveled. However, when it came to the world of motorsports, they knew no one in it and didn't really know anything about it. And even if they did, they didn't have near anywhere enough money to be able to get their son involved in the sport. For Takuma, at around age 3, he got his first bike. And around age 5, his family moved from Shinjuku to the slightly less metropolitan Machida City. Thanks to his parents' career, he spent a lot of his childhood in a nursery school. But he was pretty much like any child, loved to run and play, enjoyed riding his bike, and like many young boys, he took an interest in cars. However, he didn't really know anything about racing cars, he just thought they were cool. His father also loved cars, but again, didn't know a whole lot about motorsports. He and his family enjoyed going on sightseeing drives, loved to travel and camp, and just enjoyed the artistic and engineering beauty of the machines. However, Taku's dream to become a racing driver would be inadvertently caused by his father at age 10. Father Sato had a good friend who worked for Honda, and in 1987 when F1 returned to Japan, he used his connections to get some good deals on tickets. As such, Atsuzuka would be where the Satos would have their first experience of racing. Takuma can remember being absolutely astounded by the speed, the size, and especially the noise and vibrations from the cars in action. As to be expected, he was cheering on fellow countryman Lotus Honda driver Satoru Nakajima, but as the race took place, his attention was drawn to his teammate. Ayrton Senna was 7th on the grid, and throughout the race it was exciting seeing him passing up the order to finishing 2nd. Sato said he didn't know much about racing, but he knew if Senna was able to catch up and pass those guys, it meant he was fast, talented, and exciting. Ayrton would end up being one of Sato's biggest inspirations throughout his career. After the Grand Prix, the plans were made. Takuma dreamed of becoming a race car driver. However, his family didn't know that much about motorsports, and he knew they didn't have that much money either. Previously, he rode his bike for fun, but now he started riding to be able to race. It was the only way for him to feel speed, adrenaline, and to compete against others. Over the next few years, he followed motorsports as much as he could, went to school, and focused on being faster on his bike. When he started attending the Waco High School, he was ready to compete in some serious racing. However, in order to attend the Japanese Junior Olympics, or the All Japan Inner High National Championship, you had to enter with a school club, and his school didn't have a cycling club. 
He started doing some races with a local cycling shop, Takata Frin, and had his first race in the 1993 Shimano Suzuka Road Race. A year later, he convinced his homeroom teacher, who didn't know much about the sport, to sponsor a one-person club so they could enter more competitions. In his first year, he would be crowned the 1994 All Japan Inner High Champion. The next year, Sato began attending the Waseda University, studying in the Department of Sports Sciences. He lived in the dorms, and all of his time revolved around being in the school's cycling team. They had a strong team. In 1995, he'd finished second in the Intercollegiate Championship. In 1996, first in the All Japan Student Championship. He was comfortable here. He was good at cycling. The goals were to go to the Olympics or to the Tour de France. However, the dream was still to race cars. One day, he was reading All Sports magazine and saw an article about a racing school at Suzuka in its second year of operation. If you were selected for the program and then performed well, you could be awarded a scholarship from Honda to race in Japanese F3. However, the application cutoff was 20, and Taku was 19. He knew in his heart he was meant to race cars, but if he waited until next semester, he would be too old to apply. So he discussed with his parents. He wanted to take a leave of absence from university, see if they would help him pay the entrance fee, and see if he could be accepted into the school. If it didn't work out, he would know, and he would return to school. They respected their son's intentions, and immediately agreed to help him out, and encouraged him to do his best. He says looking back, his parents, and even his teachers, were always at his side. Prior to applying to the Suzuka Race School, Sato had managed to get up enough money to venture into karting a little. He had been doing some small races associated to a local kart shop, and by the time the application process started, he had roughly two months experience in karts and several years of cycling. The school was in its third year, and by this point had picked up some notoriety. There were over 70 hopeful applicants, and they were only accepting 7. The process would be done by paper, write your racing CV, and the best would be chosen. In a Q&A sessions before the process began, Sato would raise his hand and ask about the process. He knew on paper he was severely inexperienced compared to most of the other applicants. He told the host the CV would be an issue for him, but if he could just have two minutes to express himself verbally, he believes he could make a good case. Fortunately, the organizers thought this was fair, and agreed anyone who wanted a short meeting could have one. Of course, everyone wanted one, but the staff stayed for hours to speak with them all, and when the process finished, against all odds, Takuma Sato was one of the seven chosen. For all of 1997, his focus was on being successful in racing. He participated in a couple of local karting clubs, finishing third in the FA2 Kanto East Series and winning the Kanto West Series. He attended the Nakatani Juku Driving Theory Academy and graduated top of his class. Plus, throughout the whole year, he was participating in the Suzuka Racing School. His first experience is coming in an SRS F Formula car, essentially something equivalent to a Formula Mazda. The other six students each had over 10 years racing experience, starting from young ages. The attendees would head to the track once or twice a month for nearly a year. Sato estimates he probably received roughly 100 hours of Suzuka learning time. At the beginning it was a little rough, but he quickly got up to speed and found himself outpacing the other students, and occasionally even the instructors. By the end of the program, he was awarded the scholarship from Honda. With the Honda scholarship in hand, in 1998, Takuma was set to participate in the Japanese F3 Championship with the prestigious Mugen Dome Project Racing Team. He'd do a few races, but wasn't satisfied with the results. He had speed and car control, but he lacked years of actual racing experience. Plus, the only track he ever had driven was Suzuka. He says he was completely incomplete. He also learned that racing in Japan was competitive, but drivers who came from Europe or the Americas had a completely different style of driving. From his years of motorsports fandom, Sato knew if you wanted to be successful, you had to be competitive in British Formula 3. At this time, all the big names in racing performed well in F3 or won big events like Macau or the F3 Masters, and these were the ones who went to F1. But at this point, Formula 1 seemed too far out of reach. Sato's dream was simply making it to British Formula 3. Competing in Europe would put him against a wide variety of drivers, and plus, if he wanted to go international, he would probably need to learn English. Sato met with the people controlling the allocation of his scholarship funds, and requested to go to the UK and use his money there. In the short time of the program, he was the first to make this sort of request, but the officials agreed and Sato started making plans. 
He wasn't aiming to jump straight into Formula 3. He knew that this was way too much, way too fast. And if he flubbed his time in F3, his racing reputation may never recover. Instead, Taku was heading to compete in the Formula Vauxhall Junior Series, and then later in the year, the Formula Opel Winter Series, where he would finish third. When he first arrived in the UK, he lived with his father's friend, who was originally from England, and now helped manage the import of Honda cars into the country. Later, he would set up a homestay with a kind British family in the town of Stratford-upon-Avon. He decided on this location due to the nearby English language school along the river he found enchanting. When he first arrived here, he knew no English, and of course there was a culture shock. At first, he was most surprised at eating with forks and spoons, made from real silver that had been passed down for generations. However, at age 21, he was so busy and focused on chasing his dream, he never had time to feel homesick. In 1999, he would finish second in the Formula Opel Britain Championship, getting four wins in the rain. And he would win the Most Improved Driver Award in the Euro Series. He'd also win the Asian Formula 2000 Macau Challenge and debut in the British Formula 3 B Series halfway in the year, getting two wins and five podiums in seven races. In the year 2000, the plan was to move up to British Formula 3. There were some talks with established teams in the series, but Taku took a liking to the Carlin team that was only going into the second full year of competition. At this time, Carlin only had five employees and were relatively unheard of. Honda was unsure about the decision, but Sato believed the team had potential and felt like it was the right fit. For the next year, the team would double in size, and as far as his new teammate... Some say that he knows two facts about ducks, and both of them are wrong. <laughs> Yeah, it was Ben Collins. And fortunately for Taku, he would beat the Stig. He would get four victories, six podiums, and the most poles in the series at five. However, he would only finish third in the championship. In his own words, he says he would either win or crash and burn. In the end of the year, Sato got behind the wheel of a Jordan F1 car. It wasn't a planned test, but after Ricardo Zonta was unavailable, the team pieced a seat together and Eddie Jordan gave Sato an early Christmas present, as a reward for his rookie F3 performance. Roughly 10 days later, he competed against 1999 F3 champion Mark Hines for the role of test driver for BAR Honda at Barcelona. Over the two-day test, Taku was consistently quicker and received the promotion. For 2001, Sato had his foot in the door of F1, so there was just one thing left to do, win the Formula 3 championship. He stayed with the Carlin team. By race 4, he got his first podium, and race 5 was his first victory. He would go on to dominate the championship, getting 6 poles, 18 podiums, and 12 wins. Plus, he won the Masters of Formula 3, and the F3 International Inventational Challenge. His stellar performance landed him a contract with the Jordan F1 team, in 2002, he would be driving for Eddie Jordan. However, there was one last thing Sato felt he needed to do. He put a lot of importance on the Macau Grand Prix, and felt he had to win it, just like his hero Senna did. In the previous year, he started second and took the lead for about 8 seconds before crashing into the Lisboa turn wall. Eddie Jordan didn't want him to do Macau. He said he already had a contract. If he went, all targets would be on him. If he won, well, no big deal, he's an F1 driver, and if he lost, it could ruin his confidence. Plus, the previous year wasn't the most stellar showing. But Taku remained insistent, expressing how important it was to him. He went as far as to tell Eddie, either let me go to Macau or I won't drive for you next year. Eddie relented, but told him he had to win. Sato would go on to miss pole by less than tenth of a second, but fortunately in a race he calls the best of his career, he would become the first Japanese winner in the race's history. At the start of 2002, the Jordan Honda was nearly two seconds off the pace, and over the year there were several DNFs from reliability issues. Furthermore, Sato became known for a sort of wild and unpredictable driving style. However, still, he managed a lot of finishes just inside or outside the top ten, but at this time, points were only awarded to the top six. The low point of his year came in Austria when families were at the track for a Mother's Day celebration. With his parents watching him in person for the first time, he would be crashed into by a very out-of-control Nick Heidfeld on lap 28. He says in the car, he had no idea what hit him. He thought he knew where all the cars were around him on track, so it would have been impossible for one of them to hit him at such a rate of speed. Fortunately, thanks to the extremely high nose of his car, the gearbox on Heidfeld's car passed underneath his legs, preventing possible serious injuries. 
In addition, with his parents at the track, he was able to talk to them face to face very soon after the accident, which was better than them having to wait for news back at home. Ironically, the high point of the season would come at the second race where his parents were in attendance. At home, on the track where he saw his first race, had his first bike race, and went to racing school, Sato would finish fifth, scoring his first career points at Suzuka. Not only were the crowd excited, but so was the team owner. His finish bumped the team up two places in the Constructors' Championship, and the extra prize money was really important to the financially struggling team. However, for the next year, that all-important money would see Sato lose his seat. He had two years left on his Jordan contract, but when Honda ended their support deal with the team, Eddie Jordan used a clause in his contract in order to replace him to make a deal with Ford. He was disappointed about being replaced, but he understood the game and him and Eddie ended with a good relationship. He spent the year as a reserve driver for BAR Honda. He says it was hard being a test driver here as Jacques Villeneuve would go as far as driving a 5 day test all by himself because he didn't want others to have a chance driving his car. However, as Jacques parted ways with the team before the end of the year, Sato would jump into the car and finish 6th, securing back-to-back -back point finishes at Suzuka 364 days apart. Continuing into the next year, Sato became the primary driver for the BAR team. He had some good performances in qualifying, but his aggressive racing style often led to some incidents. Coupled with the car's reliability issues, he said there were a lot of good opportunities, but a lot of failing failing to score, and failing to get on the podiums. Finally, in the summer at Indianapolis, Sato would go from 11th after a pit stop to finish the race in 3rd, becoming the second Japanese driver to score an F1 podium after Aguri Suzuki. By this point, he had shared track space with Michael Schumacher, and they had had a good relationship. When he got to the podium, he was welcomed by Michael and can remember seeing all the Honda teammates and engineers crying and smiling. He says it was an incredible feeling. In 2005, he'd missed the second race of the year due to sickness. Then the team would be disqualified for two races after the following race due to a fuel regulation infringement. After this, Sato could never really find his form and would only get points in Hungary. By the end of the year, Jensen Button was headed to Williams, Rubens Barrichello had signed to join the team, and Sato would retain his seat. However, after Jensen resolved his contract dispute, he stayed at BAR. Since the team had three drivers, they released Sato. Honda didn't want to see him off the grid, so they supported Suzuki Aguri in an attempt to make a Honda B team. The team was small and didn't have a lot of money. The fact they managed to get a team together in roughly 90 days for the start of the year was impressive, but they were nearly 5 seconds off the front row. However, to be fair, the car Sato was driving was a 2002 Arrows that was to be displayed in the Melbourne airport, but the team bought it off their management. For 2007, Sato would be paired with former F3 teammate Anthony Davidson, creating one of the shortest F1 teams in history. Considering financial problems and how quickly the team was pieced together, and even how much the Honda A team was struggling, their improvement in performance for this year was impressive. Sato would put in some strong races, like the one in Canada. However, when regulations banned traction control in the next season, the Aguri team couldn't afford to redesign the aerodynamic concept of the car to be competitive. After four races into the 2008 year, the team would be shut down. The closing of the Super Aguri team was very sad, but with the permission of Honda, Sato began doing some testing for Toro Rosso. He was given a fantastic opportunity by Franz Toss to complete a series of test days. He would consistently be the fastest driver, even beating Sebastian Vettel in his morning test at Spain. Things were looking good. Franz wanted a more experienced driver to help continue the development of their car. Plus, energy drinks are a big market in Japan, so Sato figured he could bring some Red Bull marketing advantages. Then on his birthday, he received a call from Toss telling him, You've got the seat, Takuma. You are my driver. However, later that day, he received another call from Red Bull management saying he was overruled and Taku would not be joining the team. Franz apologized profusely. Some theories suggest that since the Red Bull B team had beaten the A team to victory and in points, they wanted more control in the direction of the junior team. Others have suggested that Red Bull couldn't have a non-Red Bull Academy driver beating and being chosen over their own affiliates, and thus the team chose Sebastian Bourdais and Sebastian Buemi. Whatever the reason, it didn't happen, but Sato remains grateful. 
Then in 2010, it would not happen again, as he would be considered as a finalist for the Renault F1 team, but would lose out to the greater funding of Vitaly Petrov. Throughout his life, Sato had been familiar with the Indy 500, and after his ties with Formula One were severed, he took a gamble to go to the USA and try to get involved with their premier open-wheeled series. He'd signed with KV Racing, and in his second season get two poles and three top five finishes. After this, he would join Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing and produce the iconic, almost, last lap pass on Dario Franchitti at the 2012 Indy 500. He says he doesn't regret what happened here because he learned from his mistake of clipping the inside of the turn. Plus, he didn't hit the leader, which was his main thought when he went for the unlikely move. His whole career had been defined by unlikely moves, so he couldn't sit there and not go for it. Sometimes things work, sometimes they don't. He then go on to race for AJ Foyt for four years, longer than anyone has driven for the team other than Supertex himself. He likes to point out he raced for the team longer than even AJ's own son. During his time at this struggling team, he would manage his first victory in IndyCar, and it remains the only victory for the team within the last two decades. In 2017, he joined Andretti Autosport, and while most eyes were on Fernando Alonso, Sato would get his first Indy 500 victory, the first for a Japanese driver, and the last Indy 500 win for the Andretti team. He then returned to the Ray Hall team for four years, where he would come up just short in the 2019 Indy 500. But then in 2020, he would close the deal, winning his second Borg Werner Trophy. As I finish writing this, Sato has just been announced as driving ovals only at Chip Ganassi Racing, by far the best car and team combo he's ever been a part of. His career has been defined by aggressive moves and taking chances where most others wouldn't think possible, both on and off the track. If you're anything like me, maybe you always wanted to become a race car driver too, and while I am older than 19, the way Taku made it into the sport differently, and does it pretty well, continues to give me a tiny spark of inspiration and hope that maybe anything is possible, and with whatever you were dreaming... So first of all, if you've heard anything about Taku before, I'm sure you've heard the motto, no attack, no chance. And so if you're surprised you didn't hear it or see it once until now, that is the type of original content you can come to expect. Just kidding, don't raise your expectations. But anyways, seriously, thank you to all the people who continue to watch my videos, say nice things, and share them around to others. It means a lot. Then, for my next video, I'm going to stay on the trend of Elder Statesmen of a series and cover a driver I used to see suggested a lot in the comments. He's definitely someone who knows of Takuma. But until then, I'll see you next time on Driver Profiles.